Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to another Fallout 76 video. Are you aware of the new community challenge going on right now? Well, there is plenty to know and I'm going to enlighten you on what you should be doing, what you can earn and what's the current status right now. Let's get into it. As you probably know, Bethesda launched a series of community challenges and the first one is called Clear the Skies, Take Down Scorch Beasts. Yes, that's right. And the entire goal of this challenge is to kill as many Scorch Beasts as we can. To maximize the challenge, we need to reach 500k and we are not so far off. That just shows how dedicated, hardworking and enthusiastic the Fallout 76 community is. We are one week in and we are not so far from reaching the maximum bar. So that's really great, but there seems to be a lot of confusion about the community challenge. That's why I decided to create this video in order to uh, clarify certain things and to allow anyone who would like to farm Scorch Beasts to do it very, very easily. And the best way to do this is through Fisher farming, in my opinion. But before we get there, let me tell you a little bit more about his community challenge. First of all, I want to congratulate everyone involved in this community challenge because we are doing a really great job. Actually, I don't think Bethesda was expecting us to kill so many Scorch Beasts in one week. And we have reached not the first, not the second, but the third reward already. And we still have about one week to go, which gives us plenty of time to reach the 500k kills on scorch piece and reach all the rewards right now we have already unlocked one week of meat week the seasonal event as well as a scorch beast icon and a female character here style it's a bun in the very back of the head looks pretty interesting and if we manage to reach the max bar we will also unlock another meat week week I know, it sounds strange and it's a lot of meat week, but these are the proposed rewards from Bethesda's part and it seems like we are going to get all of them. And that's really fantastic. Just keep in mind that the first three rewards are unlocked, but they are not live yet. I'm sure they will be very, very soon though. If you want to help the cause and go on the hunt for Scorch Beasts, then you should make sure to have enough supplies with you to actively look for the beasts without having to stop to farm certain items or to keep going back to your camp. So what do you need exactly? Well, I would suggest some food and some water to start with, as well as radaways and steam packs, because in fissures you will get radiation, tons of it sometimes, even from the scorch beasts themselves. Also, there's lots of scorch around, so you will probably get damage and need steam packs to keep going. Other than that, it's totally up to you to decide if you want to bring some drinks as well as buffs, because they do make you stronger, which speeds up the entire hunting process. Moving on, don't forget to bring lots of ammo, because you're going to need it unless you want to stop to farm some meanwhile. Don't forget that in fissures you will face hordes of scorch, and the scorch beasts themselves are stronger which requires several hits to take them down. So don't forget to bring tons of it before you start your hunt. Now let's quickly go over perks that can optimize your build to face and take down Scorch Beasts. To start with, you should really get level 3 of Fireproof because these will ensure that the sonic waves will do no damage to you. They will still hit you, they can break your armor, they can make you blind, but they won't do any damage. And that's really something that you want. 
Having any level of rod resistance can also be optimal for your build because you will face huge amounts of radiation around fissures and if scorch bees get close to you, you will get even more rods and you don't want to die from rods or use 10 rod away spare fight, so rod resistance can really help you there. Don't forget to equip your travel agent because you will be traveling a lot from all sides of the map and that's very costly you don't want to spend so many caps in your travels so minimize the cost with this perk lastly if you are using shotguns enforcer is a must because it will force the scorch bees to land and then you can easily kill them because the closer you are the more damage you will do with shotguns as well as melee builds so this perk is a must if you have a shotgun even if you don't have a build for it it is very handy to force them to land to take them down quicker and easier i know i know you're ready to fight and you're probably wondering where can you find scorch bees in order to farm them effectively well in reality you can find scorch bees all over Appalachia if you roam and explore but that's not so easy in terms of time it's also not a great idea to start with you can do a few selected events like here at Fort Defiance line in the sand is a great event to farm scorch bees you can usually find two sometimes more per event and here is a list of other events that you can look for. Scorch Earth, It's a Trap and Surface to Air are just some examples of events that feature Scorch Beasts. Now, with the recent global cooldown with most events, it's almost impossible to find specific events unless you are playing most of the day and you are lucky enough with server jumping. I try to find it a trap and surface to air for example and in three hours I didn't find any of them just so you have an idea how bad things are right now anyhow if you happen to find them just make sure to go there to kill the scorch piece to claim your rewards and so on scorch earth is the most popular and most common event of them all so don't skip them if you want to contribute to this community challenge. Also, if you come across any other Scorch Beasts, they pop up randomly sometimes. Just make sure to take them down, don't ignore them. That's usually what I do, but for the sake of this community challenge, I have been taking them down. Actually, I've been using my shotgun build instead of my melee build in order to force them to land and to take them down easily because waiting for them to land for minutes, it's not fun. This way, everything is easier. It's a win-win situation. All right, so you can kill Scorch Beasts through specific events and random encounters, but that's not ideal at all. Here is Marmut with the eight known fissures across Appalachia. Of course, there are other fissures, meaner ones, but they don't really have Scorch Beasts, so you can ignore them. And all you have to do is keep this route in mind. It's a strategy that works really well, especially because if you start at number one, by the time you're done with number eight, number one will be up again because the cooldown is quite short, actually, which means you don't need to serve a jump in order to follow this route. I did it twice. You will see next. And I think that this works really, really well if you want to contribute towards the community challenge. Now, you might be wondering how effective is this route that I have just presented you? Well, that's why I challenged myself to kill Scotch Bees using this route for about one hour to see how many Scotch Bees I would be able to kill. Hmm? interesting right anyway it will depend on your build and in your cards as well as your luck if you end up in servers with cooldowns then it will be slower but overall you will be able to kill at least a dozen of them here's what i got check out my results
Hmm, it just works. If you have plenty of time to play, then you can simply follow this road and you can drastically increase the community performance by doing this over and over, depending on how many resources you want to invest here. If you don't have much time to play, then you can simply go to events or kill Scorch Beasts whenever you see one. That's already helping. It's better than nothing. Anyway guys, I wish you a happy hunting and I'm very certain that we will reach the max rewards before the 23rd of September. We are very close, we are doing a great job, so there's nothing that can stop us. Anyway, thank you guys for your continuous support. We have just reached 15k subscribers. I'm really, really happy with how things are going. I can't thank you enough for everything you've done, watching, commenting, and liking my videos. Thank you again. Also, if you are new around, feel free to hit the subscribe button below to join the community. I also have a Patreon page for anyone who would like to support my content. And that's going to be everything for this one. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye bye.